Hi. Uh, Hi. I want to take a different step. And to be fair, terrorism, especially ISIS, feeds on the oxygen of publicity. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think that terrorism does not threaten the state. It does not threaten the economy unless we let them. It doesn't threaten the basic liberal Western value unless we let them. Mm -hmm. But it seems like people have this overblown understanding or image of terrorism, especially ISIS, which focuses on publicity a lot, unlike Taliban or other terrorist groups. So uh, my question is, to what extent is this overblown depiction of terrorism or terrorist attack detrimental to the real work of counterterrorism effort? Mm -hmm. And what is the role of Homeland Security or FBI to starve terrorism of this oxygen of publicity? So it's a, it's a really good question, and it's something we've got to grapple with, right? I mean, um, I, this goes back a little bit to the point about the executive order, right, which is if we take steps that feed the recruitment narrative, we're fueling that messaging, and we shouldn't be in the business of that. Um, look, the most basic definition of terrorism is to inflict terror on a civilian population, right? And so they win if we change our behavior as a result of what they do. So we've got to keep that as our lodestar and not lose our values in responding to uh, these terror attacks. But by the same token, as I said before, I think that we've got to be willing to demonstrate to the public the steps we are taking to uh, address the threat, whether it's to so-called soft targets like um, sporting events or train stations or airports, to be visible about the steps we're taking, to give the public confidence. I'll give you an example. I came from the Justice Department, as we've now said, after 15 years plus years being in the Justice Department, where my job was not to talk uh, to the press or do anything public, really. Um, but to focus on the facts and the law, and et cetera. So when I got to the White House, and I had the um, folks in the White House communications office asking me to talk to people like Jim Shudo, which I said, no, I don't want to talk to the press. <laughs> Why waste um, my time? Yeah. Or uh, saying, well, you know, we've had this threat, this terrorist event or something. Can you describe for the public or the press or somebody the steps we're taking? And I was reluctant in that regard. But I found that how we communicate, not me, but others, and certainly the president, how we communicate about the steps we're taking to address the threat is as much a part of the security job as running down every terrorist lead. Because if the, if the public doesn't feel confident in the steps you're taking, you're going to be um, feeding that unease that the uh, that the terrorists want to have in the first place. If I could just follow on that, just in terms of the role of the media. I, when I was at ABC, I had a debate with the president of ABC at the time. This is very recent, very, very soon after 9-11, when we had a, a habit, really, of, of every time al-Qaeda released a, a message, we put that thing on the air right yeah. away. I mean, they, they had a direct you know, line from the caves of Afghanistan to the American yeah. people. And I said, why do we do that? You know, if there's news in it, why do we repeat the same crap over yeah. and over? And I even remember saying to him that, that during the IRA days, the British, you know, used to use an actor's voice for Jerry Adams, you know, at, at the time, the Sinn Féin leader. And yeah. I was like, let's use the chipmunk's voice for bin Laden. Yeah. You know, let's, just, let's just mess with them. Yeah. Um, do you think that we, it's sort of an I kind of know your answer. Yeah. I mean, do you think we, over, not overblow, but maybe overcover the terrorism threat? I mean, it, but I also know you know what our job is. We're yep. going to cover the news. Is there a way that we could do it differently that would undermine the power of a group like ISIS? So I do think this is really yeah. hard, right? And it mm. became, um, it was most stark, I will tell you, and was a very difficult time um, the summer of 2014 which, uh, in addition to the mounting campaign uh, against and coalition campaign against ISIS in Iraq and Syria, um, there were the hor horrible, devastating images coming out of Syria mm. of Americans being killed. 
uh, American hostages uh, being beheaded brutally. And I remember fuming at the TV in my office mm -hmm. that those videos were being, or that those images were being run, understanding that it's news, it was the worst type of news, it was horrific news. Um, but you had terrorists with our brave citizens in orange jumpsuits, which I think was also probably not an accident, um, getting their message out. Um, I think it was probably a real legitimate struggle for news organizations. I don't know. Um, I wasn't in those conversations. But I have since seen the change in um, not adding to ISIS's messaging by curtailing the use of some of that footage. So um, I think that it's really important to constantly be questioning um, how we may be feeding into mm -hmm. their goals and to be willing to adjust, even if it means that somebody's going to switch off your channel. Yeah.